It's me, Michael, again from Fujifilm. Now in photography, we will use fast or really short shutter speeds to freeze action or to get overall sharper pictures. Or we'll use slower, longer shutter speeds when the light gets low or when we want a little bit of blur. But what you may not have paid attention to, at least in the Fujifilm X and GFX cameras, is that there are three kinds of shutter types, the way the shutter actually works. Let's talk about those. So the first one is the mechanical shutter. The second is the electronic shutter. And the third is called electronic front curtain. So the mechanical shutter is exactly what it sounds like. There are actually moving parts. And the type of mechanical shutter used predominantly in most cameras today is called a focal plane shutter. And it consists of two curtains that move right in front of the sensor. There is the front or first curtain, and then there is the second or rear curtain. And those terms are interchangeable. The first curtain opens, lets the light in, and then the second curtain moves into place and shuts the exposure down. And this is the uh, kind of shutter that gives you the familiar clicking sound that we're all used to. The second kind of shutter is the electronic shutter, and there are no moving parts involved at all. So those curtains stay open the entire time. Uh, what happens is the capture begins, the sensor is scanned one line at a time, the sensor is shut off, the image is saved, and then the process starts all over again. And the third type is the electronic front curtain, which is sort of a hybrid of those first two. So in this one, that first curtain remains open the whole time, the exposure begins electronically, and then the second curtain comes in to shut the exposure off. So why would you use one over the other? Well, the mechanical uh, is basic plane operation. It's the kind of stuff that we've been doing for over 150 years. There's nothing secret about it. But the big downside about mechanical is A, the noise. Although with mirrorless cameras, they're still very, very quiet. They're barely audible. But nonetheless, there is that telltale clicking sound. And secondly, there is a physical maximum speed that you can achieve with those moving curtains. So in some cameras, it might be a two thousandth of a second. But on a lot, it's four thousand or eight thousandth of a second, which is still very fast, but may not be what you need. So this is where we come into electronic shutter. So with electronic shutters, we can achieve ultra short exposure times like a sixteenth of a thousandth of a second or a thirty-two thousandth of a second on a lot of our cameras. The second advantage of electronic shutter is that because there are no moving parts, it's a hundred percent silent. So if you are an event photographer, you're photographing a wedding, you're photographing a, uh, a concert, or maybe a theatrical production, you do not want to be drawing attention to yourself with click, click, click. Or if you're shooting on a movie or a TV set, you certainly don't want that noise recorded on the soundtrack. So this is where electronic shutter is fantastic because the audience will not even know you're there. The electronic front curtain shutter has the advantage of uh, being able to do flash sync because there is the second rear curtain that comes in to synchronize with flash. But it also has the advantage of having a shorter release time because that first curtain doesn't have to move. And that way also the electronic front curtain uh, minimizes the wear and tear of the mechanical parts. Uh, so those are the advantages of electronic front curtain. The downside of electronic front curtain is the timing between the electronic part and mechanical part can get a little tricky. And so there is a maximum uh, speed that you can go with electronic front curtain before it will revert to full mechanical shutter operation. So on some cameras, it could be like a 640th of a second. On others, it could be, say, a 2,000th of a second. But then if you need shorter, it's going to have to go to full regular mechanical shutter operation. 
Now, mechanical shutter is also what you need to use if you are doing flash photography. You cannot sync strobes with electronic shutter. So you do have to use the mechanical shutter or electronic front curtain shutter for flash photography. Now, there is another downside, though, with electronic shutter which is when you're shooting things like TV screens or monitors or LED walls, you can get effects known as banding, which is sort of weird stripes that can happen on the screen because of the way uh, the pulses that happen between the capture on the sensor and the output from the LED walls or the monitor. So that is a downside. Also, you can get something called the rolling shutter effect, where you see verticals that get tilted sometimes when you're panning with the camera. But also you can get unusual kind of things that are completely unpredictable, such as uh, the bending of this hummingbird wing, which is caused by the wing moving at an ultra high speed. And at the same time, the sensor being scanned just as that wing is moving around. These things you cannot predict. It depends on the speed of the subject and exactly what shutter speed you're using. So that is another downside of electronic front curtain. I'm sorry, of electronic shutter. But the upside is speed and silence. There is a third, um, I, want to, I want to say not really significant effect that's a downside to electronic front curtain. And that is a slight worsening of the bokeh effect that you get in out-of-focus areas that's caused by that second curtain coming into play as the sensor is being read in an electronic fashion. You don't get the quite ultimate smooth bokeh with out-of-focus areas in electronic front curtain that you would with electronic shutter or full mechanical shutter operation. Also, you'll see in the menu there are items where there are several shutter types linked together with a plus sign. Now, these don't come into play unless you have your camera set to either uh, aperture priority mode or program exposure mode. Now, in those two modes, you're asking the camera to decide what shutter speed to use. So if the camera meter and logic circuits say, uh, I have to go to a 10,000th of a second, but your camera is not capable of going above, say, 4,000th of a second mechanically, then the camera has no choice but to automatically switch over to electronic shutter to achieve that faster speed. So the items that you see the plus signs on, uh, that's how they work. There you go. Use the shutter mode that's best for you. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.